Welcome to the video. Today we're going to be customizing our own text as well as working with LaTeX formulas where we'll learn how to change certain parts of our text and formulas by working with them as an array. And I bet this is something that you've been waiting to do. So yeah, this should be fun. For those of you who've never worked with arrays before or just want a refresher, I'll quickly try to explain what they are and how they relate to text and LaTeX formulas in Manum because they help us define what a string is. An array itself is a structure that puts multiple things together into one structure, be it numbers, characters, or really any other object, with each element of an array having its own index, which we use to access it. For example, if you have a bunch of tasks you want to do for today, you could put them all together into one structure, which we can call our to-do list array. Our to-do list is going to have a size based on the number of tasks we have, which in this case is four. We can also access each task with, by its own index. But it's also important to note that indices start at zero. And if you forget this, your terminal will yell at you with an index out of bounds error. So indices start at zero and they go to the size of the array minus one. And so we use this idea of an array when we use strings. When we made text appear just to the screen in previous videos, you wrote letter by letter or character by character in which way you wanted the text to appear with our text manum object. And in this case, the strings kind of represent an array of individual characters themselves, with each character having their own index. In manum, we can add multiple strings when we create a text manum object. And if we want to access individual strings we put in, we call the object with brackets and the index at which our string was into access. And we can treat that as its own object and we can move around, change colors, and do anything you want to it pretty much. For example, let's create a rainbow. So let's define some text named R. And instead of just typing rainbow, we can instead do the individual characters. So we want to color it. We're pretty much just going to color the individual characters. Now there are also ways to do this with uh, set color by gradient, but for now we're just going to do the uh, color by itself for now. So our first color we're going to set is going to be red. So remember with the arrays we use brackets and we know the first, the index of the first letter is not one, but zero. So you do that dot set color red, whoops, capital red. And then the next one we're going to do is orange <laughs> and then set color orange. And as you can see, it's, it's really not that difficult of an idea. You can pretty much just treat each of these different um, characters as their own separate object. You can move them. You can, as I said, you can do all anything you want really to them. So rainbow goes there, set color, and then green goes from yellow, red to yellow to green. And then our fifth uh, letter, we're going to set that to teal. And then our sixth color at our fifth index is going to be blue. And then we're going to end it off with some purple. And yeah, so then we can do self.play, show creation. Uh, we could just do write. Yeah, let's just do write. Write R, and let's make this, and let's do the runtime. Let's make it five seconds. And actually, Instead of opening up CMD, actually a faster way that someone in the comments pointed out was to use VS Code's terminal. So you can just terminal, new terminal. And one thing you have to do is you have to make sure you're in the main master folder if you're not already there. And the way to do this is just do change directory, type it in, and make sure you're in the main master folder. All right. And there's our rainbow. So now that we know how to work with text, let's go into something a little more interesting. Let's work with LaTeX formulas. So the way you do this is pretty much, you treat it very, very similar to text. And that let's say, let's create the formula for work. So W equals, instead of saying text manum object, we remove the T and just do tech 
manum object. So it's tech. And what we do is we pretty much input our LaTeX formula into these quotations. We can do frac. Um, this, this is a fraction. Uh, this is a fraction of a. Oops, a divided by b. But let's say that you know absolutely zero LaTeX. That is fine. I don't know a lot of it either. So what I use is pretty much online editors, and you'll find it right here. Or you can use something like Overleaf. Whoops. You can use something like Overleaf, and that works just as fine as well. And yeah, so what I you can pretty much utilize these sort of drag and drop programs if you don't want to type them out, but they pretty much have most of the formulas. Except if you want to do like your own custom packages, which I may show in a different video, like if you want to do chemical equations or circuits or all that. But this works in, um, it should work fine for here. So let's say we want to do the equation for work. So the equation for work, if I remember from physics, is the work at any displacement s is going to be the integral of the dot product. So the dot product between the vector force at that displacement dotted with a tiny change in the uh, displacement. So force times displacement gives you work. Simple enough. That should be right if I'm correct. You may correct me if I'm wrong. But what I do is just copy this and paste into this. Now if you were to run this as is right now, you're going to get an error. That's because uh, by default Python does not recognize the attack formula. So before every formula, you have to do you have to do two, one of two things. If you're working with text form tech formulas, you have to either add an R between them so that this is raw string, and when it's raw string, you can Python uh, can recognize it as something that Manum can work with, or you can just uh, double slash every time you see a slash. So slash slash slash. That works out fine. It does the exact same thing. I personally just use R because it just makes sense. So then we can do self dot play and we can write W just like any other main in text. So run underscore time. Let's say make it five seconds. So this is gonna so this is gonna draw out this uh, this formula as is right now. So I'm going to use the uh, VS Code terminal and, do the, and we're going to do the work. So now that we know how to insert LaTeX formulas and render them out, let's make our work formula a bit more, you know, snappy. So if we want to add color to our formula, which is what I want to do when I mean snappy, uh, we pretty much just treat it exactly like a tech form, like a normal text formula. We just include multiple quotations. So I want to split up this W and I want to split up the S pretty much and make the S's yellow. So we want to indicate displacement is yellow. And you also have to make sure that you add an R uh, before every single quote, even if you split it up, um, because some of them are going to work. I I mean, for the letters S and parentheses, I don't actually technically have to do an R, but then it's not going to be in the LaTeX font. So now I'm going to do W at uh, 1, because the S is the second, uh, the second character at the first index, set color, and I'm going to say this is yellow. And so now... Now, pretty much, it's going to be a game of splitting up our LaTeX formula. Now, I, you have to be careful when you split up any LaTeX formula because very often it may not work the way you want it to work. So you gotta have to, you gotta sometimes just go through a trial and error process. So is so this is zero one two three. So we're gonna have S is yellow, and then our last part of S, so we're gonna encapsulate just the S and close, not encapsulate, what the hell? There, so uh, one, zero, one, two, three, four, five. 
Okay, so we know at the fifth index, we're also gonna set this yellow. Let's test our code. And there we have it. All right, so I have this formula right here and I split it up into two parts that I wanna add a brace to, or a bracket. It's a brace. So how do we do that? Well, what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna create a bi. So this first part I'm gonna say is bi, this other part I'm gonna say is br. So br, it's just, the, it's just in terms of the formula, but. So I'm creating an object here and then, whoops, is a brace. And I'm gonna say this is our formula at zero. And then I'm gonna specify the direction, which is up. And then I'm just gonna do the same thing for here. So I'm gonna create a brace. And this one I'm actually gonna have down. And I'm pretty sure you can do left and right as well. And it, it'll work fine, it's just may, but I just want it to be opposites. So we created two braces now. So how do we add text to those braces? Well, it's also very simple. So I'm gonna create a text object called ti. I'm gonna set this equal to bi dot get underscore text. And then what this is gonna do is gonna set text right on the brace of bi. And you can add, and so you can just type in anything you want. I'm just gonna say integral form. And then the same thing for down here, I'm gonna create a text called tr, and I'm gonna say this is, this is, whoops, this is br dot get underscore text. And for this one, I'm gonna add a LaTeX formula. And the way you do that is you can do uh, dollar sign, dollar sign. So I can do something like slash int, and you'll see what it does, does a little integral sign. And then I'm gonna say, as a Riemann sum. And you'll see what this does. And now we added the brackets, so I'm just gonna create a V group called formula equals. And here, I'm gonna set WF, uh, BI, TI, BR, and TR. I'll change the story thing. All right, and then I'm just gonna do self.play show creation of our formula. I'm gonna set the runtime equal to five. And now let us run this. And there we go. Those are brackets. All right, so let's say if I want to add a box around this formula here, around let's say this second piece of the formula. Well, to do that, I'm just gonna create a box and I'm gonna set that equal to surrounding rectangle. And then the thing I'm gonna surround in is SE, the first index, so the second thing. And what this is gonna do is, by default, I'm pretty sure it's gonna create a blue box or a red box around that part, but I wanna change the color of this box. And the way to do that is you do box dot set underscore stroke. And I'm just gonna hmm, make it green. And then you can also input a thickness of the box. So you can play around with the thickness values. I'm just gonna add nine, so it's, so it's It'll be pretty thick. And if I wanna cross out a certain part of the formula, what I do is I'm gonna create a cross and then I'm gonna instantiate it. It's a very similar process. I wanna cross out the first part. And then I wanna also uh, change the color of this and set the stroke. And let's say this is gonna be, uh, I don't know, blue. Wait, oh, no, no, red. Crosses are usually red. And then I'm just going to create, uh, for the purposes of the demonstration, I'll say S group. I'm going to create a V group with S E box cross. I'm going to do self play show creation of S group. And there we go. That's how you do a box and cross. And that's pretty much it for this video. This video went on kind of long, but I hope this helped you in, uh, learning how to use, how to customize text better, as well as how to use LaTeX formulas and how to do cool things because this is a mathematical engine. So you're gonna be using LaTeX if you wanna do some cool things. But yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you some other time.